So we're going to look at day one. This is simplifying radicals without variables. Um, tomorrow we'll include variables. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at these, and we're going to look at each number, and we're going to see if we can reduce it to the point where it's just a simple number or it's something like 2 root 3. Um, if I look at the square root of 81, you're going to notice that technically there's a little 2 here. It's not shown very often because the square root of, of, of a number, it's assumed that there's a 2 because we use it so much. Um, if I take the square root of 81 um, and do the math, um, you're going to notice that the answer ends up being 9 because 9 times 9 is 81. Um, this is considered a perfect square. If I take the square root of 36, I get 6. Because 6 times 6 is 36. If I take the square root of 1, I get 1. Because 1 times 1 is 1. The square root of 16 is 4, right? Because 4 times 4 is 16. And the square root of 25 is 5. Because 5 times 5 is 25. So all of these in this column are perfect squares. And what that means in this case is that if I take 5 times 5, I get 25. So it comes out nice and, and um, even like a whole number. Okay. Now if I go back up to the other column, you're going to see the square root of 24. And if I put that in my calculator, you're going to notice I don't get like 5 or 6. I get some kind of a decimal. This is not a perfect square. So how you're going to take care of these is you're going to take 24 off to the side and you're going to make a factor tree and you're going to break these down. So if I break down 24, what do I get? Okay, so I'm going to, get, I'm going to take 4 and I'm going to take 6. I could do 2 and 12. Okay, are either one of those prime numbers? They're not. They're considered composite. So now I could break down 4 into 2 and 2, and I would mold, I would circle those when you get done, otherwise they kind of get lost when you're doing them. And then I break 6 down into two and, two. 2 and 3, good. Those numbers are considered prime, prime because only one <laughs> and itself can go into the number. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take those, we're going to bring them over here. 24 can be broken down into 2 times 2, times 2, times 3. And I'm taking it from the factor tree. There's 2 and 2 and 2 and 3. Okay? So now what we're going to do, because there's an imaginary little, there's a 2 there, okay? What I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for pairs. So you're going to notice that I have a pair of 2s, and I'm going to circle it. When I circle it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it outside the square root, and the leftover is 2 times 3, because the other 2 does not have a pair and the 3 does not have a pair. And then what I'm going to end up doing is leaving the 2 outside, and I get square root 6, and I'm done. Questions? All right, let's go on to the next one. I've got the number 500. So I'm going to come off to the side, and I'm going to go, okay, I've got 500 factor tree. What do we want to break it down into? 5 and 100, okay? 5 is prime, 100 is composite. Break down 100, what do you want to do? 2 and 50. Circle my 2. Break down my 50. 2 and 25. Break down my 25. <coughs> Five and five. Again, rather than starting at the beginning and doing five and a hundred, you know, I could have pulled out other numbers like two and two fifty. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to bring them over to the other part of the problem, and I'm going to list them in order. So I'm going to go two times two times five times five times five. And you want to make sure your square root has a long enough bar on the top to cover all those numbers. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for pairs. So I'm going to circle a set of twos, and as soon as I circle it, I'm going to write one of them down. 
So as soon as I circle a pair, I'm only going to take one out because the square root of four is two. Then I'm going to circle the fives. So I'm going to go two times five. And then my leftover underneath the radical is five. So now two times five is 10. And I get 10 square root five. And I'm done. Questions? All right, let's keep going. I got 108, so I'm going to go off to the side again. I'm going to go 108. What do you want to break it into? 4 and 54 and 2. Okay. Break 454 into? Yep, 2 and 27. 27 breaks down into? Nine and three. Okay, if you don't know what, what goes into it, you can use your calculator for that. But notice that if I took 27, if I added two and seven, what would I get? Nine. Is nine divisible by three? Yes, so 27 is divisible by three. So if you add the digits of the number together and that is divisible by three, then the whole number is divisible by three. <coughs> it's a divisibility rule. Okay, now I can break down nine into three and three, circle those, come back over to 108. I've got two times two times three times three times three. What do I circle? My two twos, so I get a two. Two threes, very good. So two times three. Leftovers, what three? And I end up with six root three. Questions? All right, let's keep going. This one's a little bit different. You're going to notice that I have a five out front. So I'm going to leave it out front, okay? And I'm going to take my 120 and I'm going to come over here. How do I break down my 120? 2 and 60, then 2 and 30, two and 30. then 15 and two. sure, and then 3 and 5, 5 and 3. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to leave the 5 out front, and I'm going to list the factors of 120. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to leave the 5 out front. Okay, and I'm going to circle what? What do I circle? Yep, two twos. Anything else? No. So I'm going to move this a little bit. Times two, and then I've got two times three times five. So that gives me 10 root, what do I get underneath? 30. And it looks weird because 30 is composite, but there's no perfect square in it. So that's why it's fine. Questions on those? <laughs> yes? Uh, for the 30, could you do 10 and, um, 10 and 3? You could do 10 and 3 for 30, yes. Um, and then you could break, you mean over here when we did the prime factorization? Yeah, you could have broken this down into um, 3 and 10, circle the 3. And then the 10 would break down into 2 and 5. So you'd get the same factors. Yep, good. Any other questions? All right, let's move on. You're going to notice this is a little bit different. You're going to notice that the 3, or there's a 3 there instead of a 2, okay? 
Um, so we handle these just a little bit different, but the process is kind of the same. Um, so what we're going to do is come off to the side and I'm going to take 54 and break it down into what? 2 and 27, 27 and 2, 3 and 9, 9 and 2, 3 and 3. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to list them like I did before. Now, when I do the square root, it's not a square root, it's a cubed root. So you nestle a little 3 right in the crevice of that little check area. And then you're going to list as 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now, rather than circling pairs, because it's a square root, we're going to circle three of them. So you'll notice I have three threes. So I put a three out front. I You do the cubed root. Notice the three is little. And my leftover is two. So it's three cubed root of two. Questions? Okay, let's keep going. This one is the fourth root, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down that 4,212. So 4,212, what can go into it? Okay, yeah, so I can take a two out, right? Because it's even, that's where I'd start. I get 2,106. Okay, can two go into this number? Yes, because the last number is even, so I can. So I'm gonna take out a two and I get 1,053. Okay, can two go into this number? No. Can three go into that number? Without checking your calculator, can three? Yes, it can. I take one plus zero, it's one, plus five is six, plus three is nine. 9 is divisible by 3, so 3 can go into it. Okay, so I'm going to grab my 3, and then my leftover is 351. Okay, can 3 go into this number? Yes, what's the sum of the digits? 9, right? And that's divisible by 3. So 3 can, can go into it, and I get 117. Can 3 go into 117? Yes. 3 and 39. Can 3 go into 39? Yes. 3 and 13. Can 3 go into 13? No. Can anything go into 13? It's prime, right? All right. So when I come over here and I write this, I'm going to put a 10 out front. I'm going to put the fourth root. And then I'm going to list them in order, 2 and 2 and 3 and 3 and 3 and 3 and 13. And rather than circling three things, I'm going to circle four things. So I can circle a set of threes. <coughs> so I get 10 times 3 because I circled a set of threes. And I got 2 times 2 times 13 left over. So what do I end up getting in the front? 30. Fourth root. <coughs> what goes underneath? 52. So the number that's outside of that radical, right in that little area, that tells you how many to circle. Once you circle the set of threes, you bring one three out front. Questions? All right, let's do one more. Okay? So I'm going to break this down. I've got 875. What can go into it? Five, because it ends in five. Okay, and I end up with 175. Now what can go into it? Another five, because it ends in five, so I get 35. Now what? Five and seven. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to write a seven cubed root. 
going to go 5 times 5 times 5 times 7. How many do I circle? 3. Why? Because there's a 3 out front. That's right. So I'm going to circle 5. What goes out front? Yes. So 5 times 7 or 7 times 5. Root 3. 7 stays inside. So I get 35 with the cube root of 7. Any questions? <coughs> All right.